we're going to journey through Hebrews 11 over the next three or four months, verse by verse by verse, to learn everything that that chapter can teach us about the dynamics of faith, how faith brings the supernatural into your life and mine. And today we begin that series. We've entitled it Faith Works. Today we're looking at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. And to kick off this incredible journey through a breathtaking chapter of the Scriptures, we're really honored to have our dear friend, anointed man of God. Let's welcome, he's not just a great dancer, but he's a great teacher of the Word of God. Let's welcome Mick Walford. God bless you, mate. I believe I've got a life-changing word this morning. I believe if you hear it, it will change your life. Totally. It's one phrase. One phrase. It's the beginning. It says this. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for. Do you know, there there is many unheralded people. There's many people that are underrated. Um, If you go to any sports team, any business, you'll find that there's people there that don't have the limelight. But they are strategic. And if they weren't there, the, the, the whole thing would change. It's the same in churches. There are underrated people. It's not necessarily the people that stand at the front. There are people in the churches that are totally underrated, hidden, not seen by man, but are strategic. There are also some underrated truths and values in the Bible that many, uh, uh, that they're ones that aren't spoken of much, but they're incredibly strategic. And I'm going to speak of one this morning. It's hope. It's hope. Hope is aligned to faith and love. It says in the Scriptures that faith, love, and hope are eternal. We hear a lot. Faith and love get a lot of press, don't they? They get an incredible lot of press. But not hope. Hope doesn't get as much press as faith and love. But it says in Colossians that faith, uh, faith and love spring from hope. In Titus, it says faith and knowledge rest on hope. So I really want to communicate to you the the power of hope. Um, I'll, I'll say this as much to you. Your faith will raise to the level of your hope. It will only it will not go beyond your hope. Faith will never go beyond your hope. Faith is the substance of what you hope for. It's a bit like, if I could explain, um, uh, uh, it's a bit like a heater, your heat in your house and your thermostat. Uh, the, th- the heat will only go as far as the thermostat. It won't go over it. So, if you want to increase your heat, you increase your thermostat. Is that right? Yeah. Then your heat goes up. It's dependent. You can, try, you can try as much as you like to increase your heat, but you can't do it until you turn the thermostat up. Now, now the heat is faith. Your thermostat is is hope. You can can try and work up your faith. Most most of our preachers, most of us preachers, including me, encourage people to have more faith. But the thing that we need to teach is to increase our hope. If we can teach and increase our hope, we'll increase our faith. Are you with me? Now, the problem most of us have is this. Most of us live by natural hope, not living hope. It's huge. Some say, yeah, well, is, is there a difference? The difference is vast. It's the difference between chalk and cheese, between natural hope and living hope. I'll give you some examples. Natural hope is on a possibility. I hope it's sunny tomorrow. It might not be sunny. Do you understand? Living hope is certain. It's certain. It's like an anchor. Listen, you don't anchor in something that's uncertain. Otherwise, when you wake up, you might find your boat in the middle of the sea, drifting. That's many people's lives. Let me tell you this. Natural hope is on an outcome. 
If, if your natural hopes fulfilled, I, I hope I pass my exams. If you pass, it's fulfilled. Living hope is in a person. It's in Jesus Christ. It says, why are you downcast my soul? Hope in God. Do you, do you understand? Hope is in a person. Natural hope is on mathematical and logical reasonings. Living hope is on the integrity of God's voice. What he says he does. Natural hope disappoints. When you read in the scripture, I hear people say, well, hope deferred makes the heart sick. Listen, let me tell you this. That's the proverb talking about natural hope. If you have natural hope, you'll always be disappointed. Isaiah 49 says, those who hope in the Lord will not be disappointed. Now this is the biggie. Natural hope is it's, it's centered and focused on now, our life now. Spiritual living hope is focused on eternity. It's focused on the eternal kingdom. Are you with me, folks? So we are so fortunate because in Hebrews 11, we get, we get a glimpse of these great men of God. I tell you, I have read this. It has shaken me to my core. I've suddenly discovered how shallow my faith is. These wonderful saints of God achieved incredible things. I want to read some of them to you. This is just your starter. Oh, I haven't even got my notes out yet. <laughs> Sorry. This is it. I get so carried away. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, he says this. Listen to this. This is, this, is, this is the faith. It says this. And what more shall I say? This is verse 32. I do not have time to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms. <laughs> administered justice, gain what was promised, shut the mouths of lions. Let me tell you, you can shut the mouth of lions. There's lots of voices in this world you can shout, shut. They, gain, they quench the fury of the flames, escape the edge of the sword, whose witness was strength, turned to strength, who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies. Listen, we can rout armies, Dear me. Women received back their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured and refused to be released so that they might gain a better resurrection. How about that? They're in prison and refused to be released. It puts you to shame, doesn't it? Let me tell you this. That where was their hope? They did amazing miracles. What was the level of their hope? I tell you this, if you read in Hebrews 11, they were hoping for a better country. It says it. They were hoping for a heavenly country. Their hope was in eternity. Their hope was in eternity. Their hope was in the kingdom of God. They, they, their hope wasn't in having their personal needs met. In fact, if you read this, I, I just challenged they forsook their personal needs. They laid them aside so that they could gain the kingdom of God. It shakes you, doesn't it? When most of our testimonies are about our own personal needs. Listen, folks. They had a heart for the kingdom of God. It's a challenging, challenging situation, isn't it? Their hope was in eternity. In fact... If you, if you read their situations, if they'd have had hope in their personal needs, they would never have done the things they did. If, if, Daniel, if Daniel had had his hope in having his own needs met, he would have prayed in private. He didn't. He prayed in public and spoke to, spoke to lions' mouths. He shut the mouths of lions. If Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, if they'd have had a hope in the eternity, they wouldn't have cared about their personal needs. They, if they'd cared about their personal needs, they would have bowed before the idol. But they didn't. And because they didn't, they walked through fire. 
let me, let me tell you this. Your faith will rise to the level of your hopes. Don't center your hope on earthly things. Center them on the kingdom of God. That's if you want to increase your faith. If your faith is to increase, set your hope on the things that God has for you. Are you with me? What does this mean to us? It's very, it's, it's that big question. Have you set your hope on earthly things or define eternal things? Paul says this, he says this in 1 Corinthians 15. If, if our faith is only for this life, then we are to be pitied more than all men. That's what he says. If your hope is only fitted in this life and having your needs met, you are to be pitied of all men. What does that mean? Does that mean God doesn't care about your needs? Yes, he does. Of course he does. He loves to meet your needs. But he says in Matthew 6, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Do you understand? He, He wants you to set your heart on eternal things. To be most, to be honest, and listen, this is where, I, I am speaking from where God has spoken to me. To be really honest, I've come to the conclusion that most of my hope is natural. I just want to survive during COVID times. God didn't want you to survive. He wants you to flourish in these shakeable times. Oh God, will you supply all my needs? I'm only a pensioner now. (laughs) Yes, he will. But don't center your hope on that. Set your hope on the coming of the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Um, I... (laughs) Some of you, let me, let, me, let me really put it in. Some of you may be struggling with sin. I know for years I've, I've tried um, and sought to live purely, seeking my own righteousness rather than Christ's righteousness. Mm. And then I suddenly discovered, what, Mick, where is your hope? Is it in this life or is it in eternity? Shall I tell you, in eternity... When you see Jesus, you'll be like him. So he said, let, let me read you this. This is, this is 1 John 3. It says this. Dear friends, now we are children of God. And what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. Then it says this, everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself Mm. as he is pure. Listen, when when I was a young man, um, I I, I could say the same, I saw this in my son as well. When I was very young, I didn't really care about washing. (laughs) It it wasn't, it was just... uh, well, why wash? I, I, we took my son to a camp, cub camp once, and uh, Leslie, Leslie mapped out his clothes for each day. It was a long weekend. There was clothes for Friday, clothes for Saturday, Sunday, Monday. When we turned up, we, he was still wearing the same clothes he, we dropped him off in. And when, when I picked the bag up, I put my head in the tent with four boys that never washed a wig and then he blew me up. Uh, but suddenly, suddenly, everything changed. He started washing. And deodorant started coming out and aftershave. What had changed him? <laughs> he saw girls. I didn't have to tell him to start washing. I didn't, I didn't have to instruct him. It happened automatically. I'll tell you this. When you have 
a hope in Christ that when you see him, he will be cha- you will be changed. You can see him now. You can see him now. You can bring eternity into the present. Ask the Holy Spirit to show you Jesus. If you've got that hope, faith follows. Are you with me? I I tell you this, um, wherever your hope is centered, it will affect your life now, automatically. If you've got a hope in a pure bride, a one bride, let me tell you, there will be no denominations or different churches in glory. Then why are we separate now? Put your hope in eternity and you'll see a coming together of the people of God you've never ever seen before. It will happen. And I tell you, it will shake the world. A united church will shake the world. Where is your hope? I I tell you, um, I'll get to that in a minute. (laughs) You might just say to me, Mick, Mick, I, I want that living hope. Do you? Do you want that living hope? I I want to put aside natural hope. I want to live in hope that will change my life radically. I want that radical faith that those people, those mighty, mighty saints, I, I tell you, I am in awe of them. Absolutely in awe of them. They had a hope and the eternal kingdom. Do you want that living hope? I do. I do. I want to give you three things. Three ways in which the living hope can grab hold of you. Three very simple things. The first is this. Know that Christ is raised from the dead. If Christ hasn't been raised, then let's go home. There is no point No point in us being here if Christ hasn't been raised. But, Paul says, but Christ has been raised from the dead. Hallelujah! He has been raised from the dead. Therefore, we can have hope. We can have amazing hope. One Peter one three. Let me read you this. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Hallelujah. Through Christ's resurrection, he has borne you into a living hope. You don't have to strive for it. He has birthed in you a living hope. Just centre it on the right things. The second thing is this. Know that Christ is in you. Colossians 1.27, it says this. Christ in you, the hope of glory. If you want to know you've got a hope of glory, know that Jesus Christ is living in you. Listen, let me describe this to you. Jesus said, I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. That means Jesus is the end times. The end times is not an event. It's a person. The end of the world is a person. It's called Jesus Christ. And he lives within you. You've got the end times living in you. Let me tell you, you don't have to understand and know the end times. You can experience them. Because you've got the living, end of the age living in you. That means everything that's going to happen in the end is living in you. That's mind-boggling, isn't it? Know that Christ is in you, the hope of glory. The third thing is this. Know that the Spirit has been given to you as a deposit of the end times. Let me read you this. 
There's a lot of scriptures, but they should be coming up here. Are they coming up every time? Um, it says this, listen. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are in God's possession to the praise of his glory. A deposit. Listen, if, 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 I, if I sell my house, if somebody gives me the deposit, it's actually in my hands. It's actual money. It's not an empty promise. A deposit it's the actual money is put into your account. Do you understand? With, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit puts you in, he gives you a down payment of eternity. In Colossians, it says this. It says there's a store of hope for you in heaven. When the Holy Spirit came in your life, he gave you the down payment. That means everything in eternity you can experience to a certain degree. When Christ comes again, you will be fully into the kingdom of God. You'll receive everything. But up to then, you have a down payment. That means, and I've done this, I've, I've looked in scriptures, you find out what God's going to do in the future, and you say, I'm going to live it out now. I'm going to live it out now. Do you know when Jesus comes again, Satan and demons will be destroyed forever. Amen. You've got a down payment of that now. You can start to tell demons where they get off. You can overcome. Because you've got the deposit in your lives. Are you with me? Do you know, when Jesus comes again, he will fill the earth with his glory. You can experience that now. Yeah. Expect his glory to come. Yeah. So he overflows from you. I tell you, we are in the most dynamic, exciting times. Yeah. Don't get drawn in to now. Look to eternity and say, God, I'm going to make eternity happen now. Um, let, me, let me say, over the years, over the years, I have studied the subject of end times. It's been over years. I've um, found a cave in the document. Poor guy, uh, poor old Aiden had to go through it. But um, I, 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 I produced a document which I've produced over years of what I believe will happen and, 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 and what my understanding of the end times is. Listen, don't listen to what other people tell you. Find out yourself. Find out yourself. And um, uh, I, we met up, I met up with Aiden. And I, I am now coming to the conclusion that I have been slightly sidetracked. I've been looking at events on the earth prior to Christ's return. That's where my hope has been in. And God said, Mick, change your focus, mate. Set your hope on what Christ will bring you when he returns. Set your hope on those things. Suddenly, your whole focus changes. Suddenly, you begin to exceed. Wow! I can begin to experience these things now. Listen, you don't have to wait until Jesus comes again. If your hope is there, you'll begin to experience it in your own life. Your faith will only rise to the level of your hope. Because faith is the substance, it's the assurance of what we hope for. God, transform our natural hope into living hope through the resurrection of Christ. The word of God. Amen. Amen. Amen.